I looked through in the chain of logistics. Well, the one niche market that I say at last 19 years ago is about your warehouse business. But because of 19 years ago, the warehouse business in Thailand is quite a traditional warehouse. It's not matched with the operation. So that's why I originated the, the, the new concept into Thai market that I call it Build to Suit. Build to Suit distribution center, Build to Suit factory, Build to Suit warehouse. That I design from the op operation first, and then I'll expand to the other building something. So that's why the BCA success a lot in that area, right? We have the big clan that understand our uh, initiative model something. So on the year 2010, I cared about a property fund. At that time, no read, like I cared, but, uh, they used the property fund as my financial instrument. Then, then on the year 2012, uh, WCA Group also in the, uh, listed in the stock market. And then when we exit in the stock market, I ha we have like, strong wings to find something. And all my clients, similar to global company, so they asked me to invest in other country. But when I look to explore for the other country in, 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 in list, you know, it seemed like for my uh, logistic Lot dropper, the design is maybe too advanced, but I saw a, a big opportunity in this mean industrial estate, right? So I think about it, oh, it's interesting to have the industrial estate, but if I set up the new company to do the industrial estate, it need time, right? So I thought cut, I use the m and &E. I take over the largest industrial estate in Thailand on the year 2015, with the money is now uh, 43 billion Thai baht. Yes. And then we have, I have the largest industrial estate, so then I create a new four business area. We spin off the duties and power to another company I listed in the stock market on the year 2016. Okay. And on 2017, I create the new digital platform because of, I know that's the future is about your technology. Because of the four, the three business is logistic, industrial estate, you three power, it seems like infrastructure, but it's very important for the infrastructure of the world country, but we need technology. So I created a new business model about digital platform to do about the platform above our infrastructure, right? So now today, the BCA group, we have allowed uh, more than 60 subsidiary company in four business area, and all together, our market cap is allowed 5 billion US dollars right now. That is amazing. Oh. So we were all impacted by logistics, industrial, and facility solutions. That, that Everyone was impacted by that during the pandemic. And did you have to pivot, make any other changes to your business model uh, to thrive? I always say that if you're the leader of the company, do you think about every year that you do business, it have a crisis. Yes. I do business, I think that this year, my 29 years of I have my own business, and I saw a lot of crisis. Tom Jam Kung crisis, Subprime crisis, Hamburger crisis, many, many things are about crisis. So if you're the leader of the company, you, you need to look far in the future. And you need to think about how your business model does they will find risk enough. So that's why the PCA Group, we had four business areas. And we have both leakling income and non leakling income. In the year that it seems like the crisis like this, you still have the leakling income to support all the company. So that's why when I do this file list on this thing like this, and I was look about for the last or the year 2017, I, do, I, I think about a lot. I think about a, a lot of about the technology. That's why I learn a lot about the technology. So I, I do about the digital transformation, digital innovations. And for last three years, this three years for the pandemic, it not affect anything for my business. Not had a, uh, the impact because of some of my business had the good impact, positive impact from the pandemic. Yes, logistic, because of the increase of the e-commerce business and all the, all the key e-commerce in Thailand, global community, all my all clients. Right. Yeah. So that you know, this increase a lot. And, but the, the negative impact, but it taught, it seemed like industrial estate because of no traveling, right? Yeah. But seem that, as you know about the, as, as I said, that have the, when we have the trade war, had the, the COVID, 
and have like a lockdown something. Can you? You have the, we see uh, the the size of the relocation from China to Southeast Asia. Yes. It's been Thailand, Vietnam, and Indonesia. That's why I also invest a lot in Vietnam. I also have industrial set in Vietnam or utilities in Vietnam too. So that's why we view the waste file list and you look in the future. And even though in operation in Thailand, we never affect because of we, I do digital transformation. We can control every my industrial estate, every my logistic in our unified operation center, it at our office. So it is for this thing, just think, let me think about the, we are the light uh, direction that we create the things, but we need to fast, faster about the technology. Since we think about now, we, we focus more about the metaverse. We think about the Web3, we think about the quantum computing to yes. light, explore more in the, our business like this. And, and just some advice for our women leaders, entrepreneurs, what, did, what can you do or what did you do to stay visible during this time? Anything different? strategies you did to be more visible or more viable? Any advice? Yes? Any advice for being more visible with your business? Yeah, I think that's, we need, everyone that do business, you have your own business, you already own people, you, know, you need to about, think about more like entrepreneurship, right? Do you think about what about in the future? You need to lead to learn, to explore in the area that you never met. Right? Because of all the new things happen every day. You need to learn, I, know, I learn the new things every day. Awesome, thank you so much. So we're gonna move on to our next uh, entrepreneur, Josie Natori. And actually, Josie and I share something in common. I actually work for Josie's uh, cousin, who was the president of the Philippines back in 2012 and 2015 when I was in Asia. So women, our network is strong. You never know who you're gonna meet and who you're gonna interact with. And so it's so important to build these bridges. And it's a pleasure to be meeting her for the first time. Let me tell you a little bit about Josie's story. She is the founder and CEO of the Notori Company in the Philippines. Uh, this is her 45th year as founder and CEO of Notori Inc. And she spearheaded this company that began with luxury lingerie design, ooh la la, and production. But she also spearheaded a company that became uh, a very luxury designer for high-end women's fashion wear, for which Irene is showcasing one of her beautiful designs today uh, that we are all admiring. Uh, she has several upscale uh, stores, department stores in the U.S. Uh, and in 15 countries, and she also has home furnishing and self-care products. She is an amazing trailblazer and want to hear more about her story, but let's watch the video. What's the essence of Notori? It's the mission of bringing art into life with an East-West sensibility. My two biggest assets are being a woman and being Asian. I feel so lucky to have been raised in a matriarchal society in the Philippines. I still remember my grandmother telling me so early on, don't ever depend on anyone, especially a man. I'm proud of my heritage. I'm proud to have built a brand where made in the Philippines was synonymous to quality without the exquisite craftsmanship from the Philippines. Notori wouldn't be what it is today. My journey in this industry has had its challenges, but after 45 years and the most tumultuous two years recently, we are so lucky to still be a privately held company family owned and closer to the lifestyle company that I imagine it to be. I feel that the best is yet to come. Josie, an amazing story and beautiful, beautiful designs. Can you tell us a little bit about your career story? Well, I'm definitely the grandmother in this group. <laughs> You do not look like the grandmother no. of the group. <laughs> I don't hide my age. I'm 75. So we're in the Philippines. <laughs> Irene says she's, she's next in age to me, right? No. But uh, no, I really admire entrepreneurs. I, as I said, I feel very fortunate to be coming from an entrepreneurial society like the Philippines. Uh, you know, that really I, I knew from age 
whatever age, you know, my grandmother was an amazing role model, my father, my mother, that, you know, it's in the blood of the Filipinos, and you can see from the, look at Irene, right? So, yeah, so I'm very proud of, I, I don't think if I wasn't born in the Philippines, I would be where I am today, or I'd be sitting here, but I really have no fetish in fashion. I, of course, I love to shop and I love to dress, but I always knew I'd have a business. Um, I had nine years in Wall Street. I was an investment banker for nine years. I've been, I'm a pianist. I've been, played my first concert at age nine, um, but just really more of a hobby for me. Um, I got bored in Wall Street and decided I'd have my own business, which was always coming, and by luck, I really thought about 100 businesses before I, including a car wash or a McDonald's franchise. And then I decided I would want something to do in the Philippines. So that's what the business is all about, the craftsmanship in the Philippines. And I was very fortunate to have started 45 years ago. I didn't really know what I was doing. So I just kind of learned on the job. 45 years later today, I'm very one of the best things that has happened, my only child, my son, yeah. joined me um, 16 years ago. No, so sorry, 2006. That's 16 years ago. And, you know, he talk about succession. Yeah. You know, he's gonna, that's his job to carry it on. But I'm still his boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is so amazing. So, so tell me a little bit about how you have made adjustments during oh. the, the pandemic. You said in the video, the yeah. best is yet to come um, yeah. and the challenges you face. So how did you, how well, did you adapt? I tell you, and, you know, through 45 years, there have been many recessions or many difficulties, but the, probably this was one of the hardest. 2008 was the first one that I felt, but we managed that. That was a real recession. But this was like frightening. <laughs> You know, because stores stopped, sh they closed, you couldn't ship. Thank God my son had started the web, our own e-commerce um, uh, 15 years ago. That was the saving grace. And, you know, we grew 100% in, in 2021. Without that, I don't know that I'd be sitting here. Um, but you know what? I think... It forced, without my son, I, I don't know how I would have navigated it. You were forced to do things that I would not have probably agreed to if it were not forced to that. But you realize we're much stronger today and, you know, less is more. And, and, and I think we had to pivot, we had to reset, we had to re-strategize. And, you know, we had our best year in 2021, top line and bottom line. So it's amazing. You know, I... <laughs> But it's difficult. It's such a difficult business. So people think, oh, my, how glorious fashion business is. But it's, there's an easier way to make a living. This is not it. <laughs> but, but I feel very, it's too late to change now. But I feel very fortunate and lucky to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Josie. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'm hearing a theme of getting out of your comfort zone, uh, getting out of your own way, taking chances, taking risks. And uh, that's why we have this great, great women entrepreneurs here on this panel and just uh, stories and lessons uh, that we can all learn from. So, Finsiri. So we have our young entrepreneur who is now in the future and is going to give us a really, really great story around her e-commerce business called e-commerce. And uh, Finsiri is a...